All right, everybody. Uh, well, got on here just a few minutes later than normal, but uh, hopefully everybody's able to join in tonight. It's a beautiful Friday out. It's really hard to sit down inside here uh, when the weather's so nice outside. We've been outside playing and doing all kinds of stuff and uh, just having a good old time. So um, it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we're, we're going to be doing some cool stuff. I'll wait for people to start popping in. I'll be happy to have all of you guys here. I'm going to probably try to keep this one pretty tight tonight because I got to get up early. Like, I get up early anyways, but I got to get up super early here. So, so be a pretty good one. Um, I'm hoping everybody's out there getting on some steelhead, uh, you know, doing all that fun stuff. And, uh, um, you know, hopefully there's some springers coming up here in the future. I know they're moving around and doing all that good stuff. So, uh, hopefully that comes up and, uh, we got all that stuff. What's going on, Kyle? You're the first one in tonight. So, uh, might just be you and I, I didn't get going at seven. Like I was planning, uh, have the, the kids and all that stuff going on. So, um, man, <laughs> uh, you going to get out and fish this weekend, Kyle? Yeah. Hey, you know what? That, nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, and I think a lot of people are probably pretty busy too. Hey, what's going on? I, uh, I'm old man, old truck. Your name's Paul, right? I can't remember if it's Paul or Peter. I, I think it starts with a P if I remember right, but thanks for joining in. I know it's super late back where you're at, but uh, I think uh, Willie was going to pop in, maybe. He said he'd ate a bunch of cinnamon rolls and drank a bunch of coffee and a text to me, so <laughs> uh, hopefully. Phil! See, I knew it started with a P. All right. Phil, how you doing tonight? Glad to have you on. Lots of fun. Yeah, we got we got Kyle and Phil. Yeah, you got, I uh, can't afford to get going this weekend. Yeah, man, I, I hear you, dude. We just got done doing uh, taxes. <laughs> and, uh, hey, Terry, what's going on? Glad to have you on tonight. Uh, we just got done doing taxes. We're actually coming out ahead. That was a shock. <laughs> Last few years we've lost, but uh, we made some adjustments to deductions and everything else. And so this year we're actually doing okay. But, yeah, I was like sitting there kind of nail biting and, doing all that um we got some uh stuff going down uh within the family and uh so it's uh requiring legal assistance and uh so uh uh the the cost for legal assistance is astronomical and uh all that stuff so but it's good to have you guys all on tonight uh hopefully mikey's on here i was gonna go take uh the the little man down to mike today but uh I didn't get a chance. Mike offered a really cool thing for him. And this is why you shop local, right? You shop local because, you know, you get to know these people on a personal basis and you go out and you fish with them and do all that. And, um, you know, uh, he was going to set up uh, King with a, a cool tackle box and got home and King was playing with bubbles and playing in dirt and doing all that stuff. And amazingly, he didn't want to go to the, the, the fish store. So... <laughs> I was like, come on, dude, let's go down to the fish store. He's like, no, I'm playing with bubbles in my slide. So, eh. you know, uh, hopefully uh, this next week, Mike, will get out there and, and uh, we'll be able to do some cool stuff. So um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, I look like Don Knox shaking. <laughs> yeah, what what did you do to yourself, Phil or, or uh, Willie? <laughs> I... I, I was uh, just shocked I, uh, uh, when you sent me that message. Uh, I'm uh, I'm thinking of uh, Don Knotts, you know, uh, uh, for those of you that don't know who Don Knotts is, that's who played Barney Fife on uh, Andy Griffith's show. So, you know, uh, if if Willie really does look like that right now, that's pretty funny. Hey, go try to try. Go try to use a bait caster right now, Willie. I want to see that. That'd be good. Oh, man. Yeah, so uh, um, Coastal Rivers blew out. And, um, oh, you're, now you're trying to stay awake to watch. Okay. Uh, so our, our coastal rivers blew out, uh, at that storm last weekend and, uh, you know, uh, big rivers are pumping high, they're cold, they're muddy, but there's some springers kicking around there. And, uh, so that, that'll be kind of interesting. I have seen some little bits of life with the bass, um, you know, that, that, uh, that's getting me kind of excited. Northwest open season. Thanks for joining. Happy to have you here. 
So, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing some rumblings of uh, some stuff going on. Uh, Northwest Open season, I thought I had made you a um, managing moderator, but I guess I haven't. So I need to pop in over here on my channel or on the live on my phone and uh, get that going. So let me take care of that really quick. And the average fish keeper. I thought I'd made you guys uh, moderators. That way you can share links and stuff like that. So now you guys are set up. So uh, anyways, great to have everybody on tonight. Uh, we were just talking about uh, weekend plans, everything else. Uh, Willie got out. He got some bass and crappie back where he lives in uh, in uh, uh, Virginia. So that's a good thing. I'm, I'm happy to hear that he's got the good stuff going. Uh, uh, but I am getting excited for bass, especially after the herring last week. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. And uh, so, yeah, I was really hoping that, uh, you know, man, uh, some bass would be so much fun right now. You know, the grind for steelhead, either they're in or they're not. Um, Mike, uh, Mike and uh, our other friend, Josh, uh, Josh might be watching too. He may or may not comment. He'll probably start sending me some random texts like, hey, did you get a new watch or you got something? Yeah, you're pro staff, dude. <laughs> Yeah, anybody with that wrench next to him is pro staff. Hey, Steve, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so uh, anyways, uh, uh, Josh and Mike had like a... Well, Sunday, Josh went on this holy terror. He, he got three steelhead, one keeper, two beautiful wild fish. Uh, uh, Mike got a couple. I didn't touch nothing, but, you know, I, I just run them back and forth. So... Yeah, see, Willie's got fish chasing bait, and that's what I want. I want I want chasers. I don't want anything wild going on. So you know, um, I, I'm I'm ready for bass at any given moment now. Northwest Open season actually has a really cool bass video he did last year, and, and he gives some secret tr uh, tricks. So uh, feel free to drop the link to that video where where you were using the secret bait. Uh, that was pretty cool. I haven't tried it yet, but I will. I'm definitely going to try that this year. Uh, it's pretty unique. Uh, so uh, all I'll say is that uh, the trick involves something that has an anise scent, and it worked really well. So it's super cool. So if you're not subscribed to him, uh, make sure you subscribe, but also um, check out that video too. Willie, you'd get a kick out of it. So yeah. Yeah, it is a tasty trick because you can eat it too. That's the cool part. You know, it's kind of funny. I watched some guys up at uh, the Dalles, actually, on the Columbia. They were bank fishing for sturgeon, and uh, they thought it'd be cool to take the Procure um, Anise Plus and uh, eat it. Um, I don't know what happened after that. Um, Lucas, welcome. Thanks. Our friend from up north, up in BC, hunting those sturgeon down. Yeah, super cool stuff. Yeah, check it out. He's got some really good videos too. So, you know, uh, definitely go over, check out his channel, do all that stuff. Yeah, get, get the, it's got to be the Procure Anise Plus. You know, I, I use that a lot with sturgeon anyways, especially in the cold water and all that. And, and it works great. You know, I, I mean, I can't say enough good stuff about the Procure products. They, they make a really good product. Atlas Mike's does too. You know, Smelly Jelly, all those guys. But I like Procure. It's made down, you know, it's made here in Oregon. So... You know, I like supporting the local guys. Yeah. Yeah, see. Yes, people do eat sturgeon, Willie, uh, as long as we can keep them. Uh, and they're delicious. They're absolutely delicious. No bones in them. Uh, you got to skin them, you know. Uh, they, they, got, they got the scoots on them and all that stuff. But they are delicious when you can keep them. And uh, usually the keep areas, you, you, the, the toxins that can build up in those resident fish, um, they can, they can be a little bit harsh on like vulnerable populations, little kids, pregnant women, you know, people with compromised, uh, um, immune systems. Yeah, Kyle, that's why I brought up the Atlas mics. I know you've been using it, uh, quite a bit this season, so it's been working out good. Um, but man, the pro cure, uh, it, it, it's kind of become a mainstay over the winter for me. And I've been having really good luck between the shrimp krill, sand shrimp, sturgeon slammer. So... Yeah, I know Northwest Open Season. You're a busy guy, you know. I mean, uh, I, I got I got a video in the queue, uh, and then um, heading out tomorrow with Chicken Little. Uh, so there should be some good content from that. So um, uh, another guy, PNW Chrome Catchers, went out with him 
last weekend and they had a really good day. So, uh, he did some great video videography. Um, so, uh, Terry, as far as sturgeon go, uh, I've had them beer battered and deep fried. I've had them smoked. I've had them, you know, grilled. Uh, it, it's like halibut, you know, I mean, it, they, they stake up like halibut and, and, you know, uh, a keeper fish is a lot of meat. So it's really good stuff. So really, I'm really digging the community here. You know, you guys are coming together. You guys are throwing some subs over to Northwest open season, you know, Sub to everybody in, in the chat, you know, and, uh, oh, by the way, shameless promotion, make sure to hit thumbs up on this video too. Uh, good stuff. So yeah. It, uh, so Steve, the, the keeper season usually happens like January 1st and it's done January 1st. Uh, that's for Bonneville pool. Uh, everybody goes out, they get their one keeper and, uh, the quota gets hit like, um, you know, it's pretty fast. Uh, I know that they reopened an uh, additional retention day up in the Dallas pool, um, which is above the Dallas dam to John day dam. Um, yeah, no problem, Jake. Thanks for stopping in. Um, yeah, it, it, they, they have broken retention seasons. Uh, one of my former students actually popped in on, uh, my premiere and he asked me if I had targeted the fish above the falls and keep in mind, he lives in the, uh, mid Willamette Valley. So, uh, I've never tried targeting sturgeon above Willamette Falls, but it does have a year-round keeper season. But the majority of the fish that I've seen caught up in Willam above Willamette Falls have all been oversized. And they're old stock from like, you know, they're they're reproducing and, and spawning and doing, you know, what fish do. You know, their life finds a way, even though the original stock was put there in the 50s from hatcheries. You know, there could still be some of those original, uh, you know, stock fish up there that that have grown up into the eight nine ten foot category you know they can live 80 to 100 years um you know that's that's kind of the cool thing so you know uh we could be catching uh some of that that old stock so uh lucas posted up a question here and i invite anybody uh in the chat to answer it, you know especially if you have experience fishing for any of the species i talk about um do you think sturgeon cocktail and frenzy scent are the best scents or just a marketing thing to get people to buy them um, no, you know, Sturgeon Cocktail and Sturgeon Frenzy have worked exceptionally well. Uh, Jake, he can, he can attest to that. Um, we, we injected some Sturgeon Cocktail, uh, the, the actual bait oil into, uh, some smelt and, uh, you know, it's a bite stimulant, you know, it, it, it helps boost, um, yeah, yeah, I know Northwest open season. Yeah. They're, they're all gone. Just like the steelhead, you know, <laughs> Uh, just go look at the fish passage center this year. It's pretty good. Um, sturgeon frenzy. I, I like that a lot. Uh, it, you know, especially in like the gel form, the pink stuff, it's grand. It's got like a granular texture to it, it but it's got everything. And it's like basically chopped chum in a, in a little squeeze bottle. And I love that stuff. Um, but the, the sturgeon cocktail in the oil form with the injector tip, it works really good. Get the injector tip and inject. Like if you're using whole fish, inject it because it, it helps a slow release of the scent especially if you're fishing in heavier current that heavier current when you have that fish on the dacron down there it, it can tend to get tore up and if you have any kind of crayfish or sculpin you know or, or if you call them pogies or irish lords whatever you know you have fish like that or even pike minnow they'll tend to sit there and nip at it you know big pike minnow they'll eat the whole thing but uh the smaller pike minnow they kind of nip at it and so having that slow scent release and where it's putting out a lot of oil, a big old slick, you know, that's, that's one of those things, but you know, yeah, you know, uh, scent, scents, uh, they, they help out a lot with a fish that can't see, you know, and, and, and they're a great bite stimulant for salmon, steelhead, trout, bass, panfish, you know, uh, you name it, you know, especially if you're fishing a, a soft plastic lure or, um, you know, you're, you're doing something like that, anything that's infused with an oil or, uh, has some kind of good sticky scent on it. Like a lot of those gels that are out there, the Atlas mics for like steelhead beads, great stuff, smelly jelly in a little jar. Uh, that's good stuff too. So, you know, it, it, it all works out great. It's worth definitely having uh, kind of a, a variety of different scents, uh, so to speak. So, so, uh, yeah, good. It, it's all good stuff. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'd be curious to see in the chat what other people are using. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised uh, Weed Hopper's not here yet. 
and uh, you know he he usually has quite a bit of input on different things that he likes to use different tackle and all that kind of stuff and you know he's he's a multi-species guy too so you know a mcdonald's big mac okay so my style baits uh they went out crabbing and, and i don't r quite recall but they put a bunch of sausage mcmuffins in the crab trap um I, and i don't know uh and this was uh willie here I, they you know what uh i would say uh you know out of anything um that type of stuff's probably not gonna get bit by by one of those fish they could take down a whole big mac they trust me you know you got a mouth you know i i'm i'm holding up you know like a, a 10 inch diameter circle here especially on the big ones they, they just whoop but it's it's not in their dietary plan willie i'm sorry uh but you know uh maybe a a, a mick fish you know you get the tartar sauce off of it and if you can get that 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 haddock to hold together or cod or whatever they're using white fish or <laughs> i i don't know what they even you know it could be pigeon for all i know like they're mcnuggets but yeah i mean uh uh i didn't see the outcome of using uh sausage mcmuffins on crab but crab are kind of crazy um yeah sir well sturgeon cocktail uh just so that you know i i mean i could get the bottle out but uh it has uh so the procure one has squid um herring salmon oil uh whatever um uh the smelt uh shad i mean it, it's basically chum in a bottle you know it, it's you know it, it all works the same so you know all that stuff I, I am Logan. I'm going to get rest, but I, I have to do my live. You know, I got to keep everybody entertained. So, uh, everybody, if you don't, uh, if you haven't subscribed to Logan, you can subscribe to Logan. Uh, he's actually more active over at, like on the Facebook and Instagram side. He's a, a licensed guide here in the state of Oregon. Uh, he does, a, he guides basically 260 days a year or something like that. He goes up to Alaska though. So I don't know what the, the time frame is, but the guy never stops fishing. So, I am going to get my rest, Logan. Don't you worry about that. I'll be, uh, I'll be hauling down to, uh, uh, the river as, as fast as we can. So, um, so Northwest open season, the only thing he uses is squid and the bait injector. Uh, he gets the five pound box from H Mart in that last two years. So H Mart's an Asian market here in, um, the Portland area. And I, I think they have other markets too. Correct me if I'm wrong, Northwest open season, but um, H Mart, they, they sell a lot of good stuff and, and they have all that good, all those good things. So, um, and average fish keeper, uh, he does a lot of kokanee fishing and, uh, so tuna oil and corn is a regular for you. That's interesting. Uh, Logan, if you're still on here, uh, Logan's a kokanee slayer, uh, and, and he's probably got some, some stuff that he uses too, but, um, yeah, you know, put some stink out there, get that, um, and you're doing the tuna and garlic, uh, Terry. So, you know, it's always fun to kind of hear what everybody else is doing. You know, the tuna and garlic, the, the, uh, tuna oil and corn, you know, and I don't, you know, if, you know, Logan, I, like I said, um, you're trying some leaders. So you, oh, oh you're tying. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get those done. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, it's always interesting to hear about all the different stuff, you know, nonetheless. And so, um, yeah, that, that's one of those things where, you know, you get, uh, you know, you get all these varieties of baits. So, um, another guy that's big spilt milk productions, he does a lot of stuff with kokanee and I don't, I think what I was originally going to ask, and, and I'm not a kokanee angler. I've never done good with it. I got, I got like cowbells and stuff, which is like super ancient old technology. I think I told Logan that in a text. I'm like, yeah, I'm used to cowbells and wedding rings. And he's like, yeah, that's ancient, you know? Um, you know, uh, uh, but, but what is the main driver of, of why kokanee like corn so much? I I've always been curious about that. Cause I remember when I was a kid, grandpa took me up to this lake up below Mount hood. Uh, it's not lost lake it's a different lake, but, um, anyways, uh, he, he was uh, over there. He's like, shh we're going to put some corn on the hook, you know? And, and so, uh, apparently corn was considered illegal or something like that. But then you go to the store and here's all the shoe peg corn in cans, you know, uh, like at the tackle shop, you go down to the regular store and get that. Um, you know, uh, it, but I don't, I don't know what drives a kokanee to like corn so much. So if somebody has got to answer to like the biology of kokanee and why they're driven to a cereal grain, you know, cause 
when you think of cereal grains, you think of like common carp and grass carp and all these other things, you know, uh, all these other fish species that are out there that, that tend to, you know, basically eat bird food. Yeah. Uh, so average fish keeper, you know, obviously you kokanee fish a lot, no clue. It just works. <laughs> it's considered illegal because fish don't digest it and they overeat it. It could kill them. Um, yeah, Terry, you know, you know, doesn't look, you know, do, anyone knows. I think you, uh, average fish keeper, you touched on an important point. You know, they talk a lot about that, you know, Northwest open season, it looks like maggots and larva. I could, yeah, that, that definitely, you know, hits, you know, you know, and, and yeah, the, the corn's porous, you know, it, I mean, it, it'll soak up that scent and hold it really well. So yeah, you know, definitely, uh, you know, one of those things where it's like, okay, well, uh, you know, as far as that, yeah, we can't even digest corn. <laughs> oh man, I'm not going to go there. I think we got on, uh, we got on like bad stuff last time about like, yeah, we're not going to go there. But anyways, um, yeah, well, and corn has buoyancy too. Like you said, average fish keeper, uh, other than corn. <laughs> well, Willie, you're from Virginia. So, you know, uh, corn liquor. Yeah. That gets digested. You know, you get a little bit of that white lightning and then, you know, here, <laughs> You're good to go. <laughs> but yeah, regular corn. Uh, uh, I think it was the Red Badge of Courage or something like that. They were talking about the the, the sh soldiers going through, picking the corn out and and washing it and re-eating it because they had nothing to eat in a prison camp or something to that effect. I, there's a, a book uh, about the Civil War and I believe Andersonville or something like that. So it was kind of interesting. Oh, man. Hey, there's Brandon. Thanks for joining in. We, we, I, I was just mentioning you because we were talking about bait scents and baits and all that kind of stuff. Because Lucas from BC, he was asking about sturgeon cocktail versus sturgeon frenzy, and and there again, like uh, you know, uh, you know, it was one of those things that that we were uh, having this open discussion in the chat about, like. Um, you know, I mean, I feel like sturgeon cocktail works good in oil and then the sturgeon frenzy and the gel works good. You know, if you want to coat your bait, Northwest open season, he's using, uh, you know, I think he was, uh, uh, if I go back, let me, let me scan back up here. Uh, he's using, uh, the squid bait injector and, uh, just regular squid, which, uh, you know, is what he uses. So, uh, Logan, uh, here we got uh his his feedback here i used to show up to the lake with six different scents and colors of corn couldn't find a pattern all i use is straight corn and tuna oil keep it simple more importantly depth speed and flash and the lure yeah you know and it, yeah the, that that uh combo that you put together um that that's one of those big things that that really uh you know i mean that seems to be the big like sticking point with with kokanee is is like speed depth and the lure combination because, you know, they're attacking hoochies, right? You know, and, and when we think of hoochies, we're thinking of like, you know, offshore coho trolling, um, you know, uh, you, it, we could either be running a triangle or a 360. We put a hoochie in combination with a spinner blade. It works really good. Some guys, you know, uh, Steve, I know that you run uh, straight hoochies or you use tinsel skirts. Uh, my friend Jim uses everything from a tinsel skirt behind a triangle to you know, uh, he'll, and, uh, Oregon diver It's an old school diver. It's really cool. Um, you know, you could probably still do it with like a dipsy diver or deep six or, um, you know, um, you know, Brad's Magnum diver, especially if you got fish coming and just crashing into your gear. But, uh, you know, going back to the kokanee, the hoochies are, are one of those things that they've always intrigued me as to, you know, putting a combination of corn, a hoochie, a bow tie blade, you know, and a dodger on, you know, that's, that's something, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be going to a really good, um, you know, kokanee lake this summer. I'm going up to Wallawa Lake for nine days. And so I'm going to really try to dial in on those kokanee, but you know, with old, uh, you know, mercury over here, uh, I, I'm going to have to put about, uh, uh, a couple drift socks out there to slow it down. So, um, yeah, it's just downsized coho fishing. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think, uh, Logan makes a great point here. Uh, you know, that, that's something, and, and there again, Dodgers working much in the same way as a, a three sixty. Well, I, I guess the Dodger does more of this action. Um, and Steve runs Dodgers too. Uh, uh, Steve from Wyoming, he runs Dodgers as well, uh, for the ocean coho, uh, one, of, one of his things he does. 
and, and, and it is a, a, a powerful bite, you know. I mean, he's just over there. We're trolling and just kabang, you know. Yeah, nine to one, 0.9 to 1.2 miles an hour. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to get drift socks for this guy, you know, or, you know, that thing, you know. Because <laughs> uh, uh, even in the low, low gear, um, you know, that's the whole thing. So uh, Lucas posted up another question. I, I, I love this because he's always asking these great questions. Uh, does anyone wear latex glove when baiting their hook? Not, um, sturgeon don't care. I mean, they really don't. And, uh, and even for that matter, salmon, you know, uh, it, it, you know, the, my reason for wearing gloves when I bait is just because, you know, the tiller handle on my motor, you know, it gets slimed out. Logan wears gloves and uses a rag, you know, it just gets nasty after a while. You know, and, and uh, you know, so if you don't want to get your stuff, like, all nasty, you can bait up and then take your gloves off, cast out, and do all that kind of stuff. Um, but you don't need to have gloves for sturgeon at all, um, unless you're just trying to stay clean in general or whatever else. Sometimes, you know, it just doesn't matter. You know, uh, out there jigging uh, herring with Logan, I, I didn't put on any gloves. I'm over there popping herring off, and, you know, I mean, I smell like the bait fridge at the bait shop at the end of the day, you know. <laughs> You know, and it doesn't come off, like, super easy or anything like that. Herring stink. Yeah, I mean, they reek. Um, so, yeah, in uh, Northwest Open Season, his advice here is, he wears nitrile gloves for every kind of fish, not because human scent, but it's just nice to toss them when you're done. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's a good thing. You know, that's that's that. So, yeah, and uh, Logan, he just doesn't want the crap on his hands, you know. Um, and, and And that's good, too. You know uh, eggs and stuff like that. Brandon's got here, you know, um, he wears them if the baits died. So like with eggs or if you're doing brine and bright on your herring, you know, something that dyes them, uh, it, it, it will turn your hands pink or green or orange or, you know, red or whatever colors, you know, usually it's just opaque pink. And you can tell the guys that fish bait a lot because they take their, their hand and wipe it on their, uh, uh, waders, you know, so you'll see all this red stuff all over their waders and stuff. It's kind of like the sign that, Oh yeah, that's a that's an egg guy, you know, or even cured coon shrimp, or uh, you know anything like that. Uh, I'm a fast reader, Terry. Uh, uh, I was afflicted with this horrible issue of like this this ability to read fast, so I try. <laughs> um, and then uh, weed hopper, you're also yeah the the uh, sodium sulfite will dry you out. You know, I mean uh, anything with sodium in it, you know, salt basically. Uh, it, it really, you know, dries everything out and, and it can be corrosive too. You know, Kyle makes a good point. You know, he, he tries to keep all the eggs off his waders and stuff like that. And that's, and that comes down to personal equipment maintenance and everything else. You know, I, I mean, that's the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, you know, there, there's a lot to be said about all that stuff. So, you know, uh, it, it should be, uh, you know, without saying, you know, it's a personal preference thing. And I remember growing up, you know, th there wasn't boxes of nitrile gloves. You know, guys would they dig in the box of sand shrimp and they hook that thing up and they grab a sandwich and start eating. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it was. You know, you're out steelhead fishing or you're salmon fishing and, you know, it, you put on eggs or whatever else. And, you know, I remember when I was little, you know, uh, just seeing, you know, the old timers, you know, they're just rigging it up. And, you know, you think about it, you know, you go get a couple worms from the store and you go down to go catch some stock or trout or power bait or whatever else. Yeah. <laughs> you need a free source of gloves here. Uh, get them from the doctor. You know, the heck with Amazon, you know, that you don't, you don't need none of that business. <laughs> yeah. Wiping your hands on your waist it makes it easier to stand your waders up in the corner. Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, a lot of waiters, uh, waiter companies, they give washing instructions and stuff. And, I've never washed my waders, so to speak, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, the only time I wear waders really is in the winter. And so, you know, I don't worry about getting all sweaty and nasty and stuff like that. And, in my waders, you know, unless I'm doing a lot of hiking or it's high humidity or whatever else, but even at that, you know, I've never noticed that the old Sims getting that, you know, so, um, yeah, you hang yours in your room. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Kyle. So, yeah, if you're keeping them stored in an indoor area, I mean, mine, mine are sitting over there on the, on the edge of my motor stand there, you know, ready to go for tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, they're, uh, you know, usually I hang them up and, and but they're out in the garage here. So the, the garage smells like a, a trawler. So yeah, turn them inside out and wear, yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know about that, Willie. Uh, between all the sand, mud, uh, fish blood, and, uh, you know, slime and everything else that gets on the outside of them, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'd kind of hold off on doing that number. But, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, and, and plus, I, I really don't know how well they would work. But, you know, uh, I guess if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Let's turn them inside out. There you go. Uh, so... You had to throw yours away after this fall. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, being that you pretty much fish every day, Logan, I would say that, uh, y you know, your waders probably stood themselves up. So, you know, uh, definitely, you know, they get nasty, especially, yeah, the, all the eggs and everything else. And, you know, uh, I'll attest that that was, that was the hot ticket, you know, that uh, those eggs were working real good down, down where you were fishing at. So, yeah, you know, waders and... All this other stuff, you know, I see these people go buy these Patagonia waders and they buy the Patagonia boots and they, you know, spend, you know, 750 to a thousand dollars on a set of waders and they wear them like once or twice a year. And they just look, uh, always look just absolutely pristine. You know, they march out there onto the Chutes River, you know, and they pull up in their Mercedes and they slide out and they slink down to this ripple and they throw some stuff and they're just like, oh, I'm Patagucci, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I'm like, man, that guy doesn't fish, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you see Logan, you know, and it's a big red streak across his lap, you know, and I, I got another pair of waders over here that's pretty, uh, pretty pink, you know, uh, from, from all that stuff. But yeah, you, you start getting lots of fish blood and guts and everything else all over. Um, you know, that's the whole thing. Um, yeah, you know, uh, if you don't constantly wash your waders, yeah, yeah, you want to wipe them off and spray them down, you know, uh, wash all those and, and do all that stuff. So, um. And then, uh, you know, Meridian Z, uh, so I've checked out the Paramount ones, Kyle. They, they are pretty darn good waiters. You know, I, I would, I would, uh, definitely look at investing in a pair of those, uh, you know, here pretty soon. So, uh, but I got to wear out these Sims, uh, first, and then, uh, I'm going to be in the market for some new waiters. Uh, my, my friend, uh, Justin Carnop, the, the guy that, uh, we went and did the CD rod testing with, uh, in a couple videos ago, got some sturgeon on it. Um, you know, uh, they, uh, they, uh, you know, they, they, uh, he, he's working with this place called Adams built, but their waiter prices are on par with Sims. And so, you know, the amount you fish and the amount you get out on the river. And if you're wearing through waiter boots, like crazy and all this other stuff, you know, it, it's, you know, in my opinion, you, you don't want to spend a ton of money on a pair of waiters, but you also don't want to go get the cheapest ones. I've had caddis. And I've blown through the heels in them in one season, you know, and it's kind of like, well, these were supposed to be your deluxe model waiter. You call up, nobody answers the phone. You know, it's just like, you know, hi, you've reached Caddis Waiters in Lapine, Oregon. Please leave a message. Hey, I got a warranty issue. Nothing. Email, nothing. You know, Sims, they'll, they'll take care of you. But, you know, that's the whole thing. And you got the discount code for that also, Kyle. Uh, and I'll get back to your comment, Brandon. Uh, you can use the Oregon Fishing 20 discount. Yeah, it makes them 280 per zip-ups. That's nice. I'll tell you what, nothing worse than trying to go pee out there and uh, having to undo everything. Yeah, you take the bait towel. Yeah, the bait towel is a big hope, you know, that, or a help, you know. You definitely want to have a bait towel with you. Um, let's see, Brandon, he was a product tester for Corker. Yeah, you know, it'd be cool if you could get, you know, some Corkers again. Corkers are good boots. You know, they're really good. Um, someday you hope, uh, yeah, waiters with a zipper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Caddis makes a pair for like 250 bucks, but you'll go through them in about a year. So, you know, you're best off. You know, I, I would say the Paramount Outdoor ones that uh, um, Kyle's talking about are, are pretty premium. So good stuff for sure. So uh, what's everybody going to be doing this weekend? Uh, we got, we got, I, I know Kyle, you said you're going to probably hang around home, do all that stuff. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Terry, you're going to get out on the river, uh, Northwest open season, you know, uh, you guys going to get out there, do any fishing, uh, you know, Brandon, you're going to get any fishing in, you know, I know, I know that there's quite a few folks that, uh, you know, this beautiful weather, it's going to, it's going to get real busy out there. So. You know, a lot of the fair weather guys are like, oh, I don't like the rain or cold, you know, to get a bright sunny day, you know, that that's going to be there, you know. So, yeah. Is it hot down there? Yeah. Uh, Logan's talking about where we're going. Yeah, uh, that's OK. I'll, I'll take a sunburn. I'm, I'm getting too pasty. You know, I got to 
you know, between the welding at work and everything else, I'm not getting my normal tan. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, answer Terry's question, uh, you know, Logan's camping down there by the bay. So uh, he can attest to that. So, yeah, definitely uh, there's herring for sure. And uh, average fish keeper, you are going to uh, do some kokanee fishing. That's awesome. Brandon? Yeah, your son, uh, Riley. So uh, Brandon's son, Riley, just started his own YouTube channel, uh, Riggin' with Riley. Uh, Brandon, if you want to slide over and get that link and drop it in the comments, uh, since you're a managing moderator, uh, people can slide over there and, and go support Riley. That would be super cool. Uh, Riley got, just got a kayak. He's going to go out tomorrow. He's going to give it a shot for some springers. Uh, it'll be kind of cool to see. Uh, he's got the right stuff. He's just got to get all the other stuff, uh, you know, set up. And uh, Willie, rain the next two days, antique stores. Should I be looking for something particular for me? Uh, nothing right out of the gate, Willie. I'm, you know, uh, I'm going to be kind of pre-indisposed for a little bit. I'll, I'll text you some of the details, you know. I'll, I'll let you know what's going on, but... Um, you know, that's kind of one of those things, uh, you know, uh, so I'll, I'll text you the details, uh, but, um, uh, as of right now, I'm, I'm, I'm golden, but I always appreciate it when you're out there looking around and looking for those super cool vintage, uh, conventional reels for me. So I love it. You know, uh, it's really cool. Um, and then, uh, Northwest open season, you're going to be visiting family and then hopefully moving in the next two weekends. Well, uh, I know that uh, you had said at one point that uh, you were getting ready to move and do all that stuff. So, uh, you know, hopefully uh, that all gets uh, squared away for you and uh, your move goes successfully and you guys are all safe. It's uh, that's a that's a big thing. So uh, and Terry, let's see. Oh, there's uh, uh, so make sure to click on that link and uh, uh, rolling with Riley. It's not rigging with Riley. It's rolling with Riley. Cool. Uh, so make sure to click that link over there. And Terry, you're going to go get some herring and then a comedy show tomorrow night. That sounds like a fantastic Saturday. Um, that's that's super cool. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, very cool. Uh, you know, sounds like everybody's got some fun plans for the weekend. If Phil was still here, I'd be asking him if he's planning on hiking or working on the Toyota. Or maybe he's actually going to get out there and be able to go fish. That would be very cool. So, uh, yeah, definitely. It sounds like everybody's got, you know, pretty good weekend plans squared away. Um, you know, that's, uh, very cool. So, you know, and, uh, always appreciate, you know, everybody that, that, uh, comes around and does all that stuff. So, you know, like I said, these are fun. I, I love chatting with everybody and finding out, you know, Hey, what are we doing? You know, it, it'll be, uh, you know, really cool. So, you know, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, this last week I got out, uh, Thursday morning, I got out and did some steelhead fishing. It had slowed down quite a bit. And, uh, so nothing had been hooked in a, in a couple days. And, uh, so, um, this morning, uh, I had to take care of taxes, you know, do all the adult things and a couple other items. And so I'm helping my friend, um, uh, get a, a, a welding and fabrication business off the ground right now. And, for those of you that don't know, uh, uh, I'm a welding instructor. And so I've been, I've been welding for, better part of 22 years now. And, um, you know, uh, so, uh, my friend, uh, he lost his job. He was doing, uh, um, technical sales for a welding distributor and, uh, uh, things just weren't working out. Uh, and he'd been there for quite a while, but it, it actually worked out good. And, uh, so, uh, we're getting a kind of a welding and fabrication business going on, helping him out. And so spent a good portion of the day, uh, working on that stuff with him, uh, trying to get, business plans put together, um, equipment, uh, lists and, uh, trying to do all the planning and everything else. And, uh, you know, all that. Hey, Ted, how's it going? Thanks for stopping in. It's always fun to have you here. It's, uh, definitely cool. Uh, I know it's late where you're at at home. So, uh, you know, thanks for staying up. I know, uh, you Willie and Phil, you know, you guys are troopers, man. It's 1045 at home for you guys. So, uh, thanks for stopping in. Definitely appreciate it. So, uh, and Brandon, thank you. Uh, uh, I always appreciate your support and you popping in and, you know, uh, I value everybody's, uh, input. Yeah. Northwest open season. I teach it Chemeketa. Wow. Uh, cameras backwards. Yeah. Chemeketa community college. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm a full-time welding instructor down there. So, um, if you guys ever get the inkling to maybe do a night class, if you're down in the middle of Willamette Valley and you got time and, uh, you know, maybe winter or something like that. 
uh, you know, uh, things are slow. Uh, don't hesitate to, uh, you know, you shoot, shoot a message over to me to get some information on registering. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I teach all processes. I, I don't teach the TIG welding because it's a standalone class and it takes a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, we just don't have the time with the evening stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, if, if you're interested in taking a course, uh, you know, uh, let me know and I'll help you get lined up. Uh, Chemeketa can be a little bit difficult with, uh, all the stuff that, uh, you know, the registration and getting a, a student ID number and stuff. But once you get through that, um, and you want to do, uh, maybe an exploratory course or something like there or, or like that, um, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, uh, you know, pretty cool. So, um, Northwest open season, you went there eight years ago. You got to know several of the welding students pretty well. That's cool. Um, you know, uh, it's always cool to hear, you know, people talk about all that stuff and everything. So, you know, uh, I, that's, that's really cool. You probably, uh, had, uh, Carmen and, uh, uh, Mike, uh, a couple of those guys, Andy for instructors. So they, they're still there. They're still plugging along. They're doing good, great over there. So, uh, but yeah, the CAD program, uh, they're housed in the same building. Uh, well, one of our shared buildings, we have our own welding and fabrication shop there too now. So, uh, if you were there eight years ago, though, you probably saw the brand new shop when it went in. So, um, yeah, I've been there seven years. So you, you were just right before me. So uh, uh, as a student, uh, I'm faculty, of course. But yeah, it's a it's a great place to work. It's a great place to go to school. It's a fantastic community resource. So so, uh, yeah, definitely good stuff. Dogs came out to say hi. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool definitely cool you know you make that connection with everybody and uh you know that that's one of the cool things about you know going to college or taking some college courses you meet some really cool people there and you know and and all that and you know it's it, my my gratification is is that i'm i'm helping you know people to you know not only get better uh you know with their own lives but um you know make uh you know make a difference in our community and and, and help people get to a place where they're financially, you know, sound and stable. And they have, they have a career they can be proud of a trade. And, you know, that's, that's one of those big things. So definitely cool, you know? Uh, uh, so, but, uh, yeah, helping my friend get this thing off the ground. Uh, I've been talking to him about a couple fishing products. I got ideas for that we could fabricate. And so, you know, we might be uh, building some stuff uh, for some some bank fishing, um, maybe maybe some boat stuff, maybe some clamming stuff. You know, uh, it's all kind of up in the air right now, but uh, we're going to try to get some jobs moving through the door, uh, getting some uh, production overflow and all that stuff. So come on. You want to come up here? You got the dog here. Come here, girl. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to say hi. There you go. Yeah. She wants to say hi. So she came slinking around out of the backyard. My old bird dog here. That's Hazelnut. <laughs> and of course, then I got Otto over here. The other bird dog. Yeah, he's a big baby. You can tell my dogs are real vicious, you know. They're, they just, they don't know what to do, do they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're good dogs. They're a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, uh, Kyle, I looked into those talon rods. Those things are pretty nice. I really like those a lot. Yeah, uh, uh, they're super cool. They're uh, 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 really nice. Yeah, they're both, uh, so both my dogs are German short-haired pointers. Uh, they're both uh, uh, purebreds. And so I got Hazelnut first. That was my first pointer. And uh, she's, a, she's a hunting and killing machine. She, she uh, definitely has no lack of prey drive. We got Otto second, uh, the, the, my big male here. He's a big baby. And uh, uh, you know, he, uh, he's, uh, not so much of a hunting and killing machine. He's more of a couch potato, aren't you? Yeah. He's sitting here staring at me. I think he, I think this is the call for food. If you can hear the whining, you know, that this is all about food, isn't it? Yeah. Come here, Otto. Come on up. Yeah. Is this a food issue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see the ears pop up. So yeah, definitely Kyle getting us, uh, uh, you know, getting it all lined up and everything else before the 2024, 2025. You know, I'm, I'm happy with my Okuma stuff for my uh, steelhead rods. I, I haven't been disappointed yet. So, you know, definitely, uh, uh, you know, they're, uh, they've been serving me well. Uh, I'm not quite ready to go to a different rod yet. And, uh, you know, but uh, Talon's definitely high on my list. So I definitely like what they're doing with the rods and everything else. So, 
you know, good company. And, you know, thanks for, you know, pointing that out. <clears throat> yeah, the SSTs. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with all the Okuma products, Okuma has a whole bunch of different rods. Uh, they have like the Celilo, they have the SST, they have the Guide uh, uh, Pro Classic, the Guide Pro Select. They have uh, they have a whole bunch of different ones. And uh, so I'm running the Guide Pro Select rods for all my steelhead rods. But I have one, uh, I have uh, two SSTs. One I use for a heavy float rod for like salmon. And the other one's my trolling rod. Um, you know, they, they seem to be, uh, you know, they, they, they served well. They fought in plenty of fish and uh, I haven't had any issues. I did break one of the guide uh, pro selects, but that, that could have been my fault. I, I thought I had a fish uh, hit a uh, spoon. And I set into it a little bit too hard and uh, it just went kapow at the tip, but it's lifetime warranty. So it actually worked out really good. Uh, Logan, he runs uh, all of the Akuma products as well. Uh, and, and there's a lot of fish brought to his boats with them. So I have full confidence in those, uh, you know, and I have a variety of different rods. Um, you know, uh, here we got the Shimano scimitars. Yeah, you know, uh, for, for an economy rod, uh, scimitars do extremely well. I've had a couple scimitars and, and I've landed, you know, everything from surf perch to coho on them and, and even Chinook for that matter. You know, they've always served me well. I had a Claris for a long time also, uh, you know, another decent, you know, reasonably priced rod, you know, that you can get and it, and it really worked out well, nine footer. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so many different rod options out there that you can go for and, you know, really find some good stuff out there. Um, you know, of course, on the East Coast for Willie, nobody deals in Akuma. Uh, yeah, you get you get some Stratus reels, and and that's about it. Um, you know, uh, there again, you know, for for you, Willie, uh, especially uh, with a lot of the stuff, um, you know, uh, with with the uh, closed face reels, uh, Akuma doesn't make a lot of great options. I mean, uh, they they have like some SST kokanee rods that might be light enough action for that, but. Um, you know, a lot of your other rods that you're dealing with there in uh, on the East Coast, you know, they work out pretty well. So, you know, that's that's kind of one of those things that they they go with. So I have dogs demanding food here. So <laughs> excuse me for a second while I feed these guys. I'm going to just take care of that. Keep that chat going. All right, dinner time for the dogs. And they're very vocal about it. <laughs> As you can, if you couldn't hear it, it's like, it's like, what do you want? So anyways, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, with, with a lot of those Akuma rods and everything else, uh, you know, one of the things is, is that, um, you know, you get, you get uh, some that are, you know, a little bit um, too powerful for a lot of those different reels that that you're running willie uh so they're not really ideal but um let's see yeah brandon he's talking about shimano rods uh convergences i had i had a 10 foot convergence uh that i used uh, a lot for surf fishing um you know it, it it um does a lot of stuff there so well look who it is Wow, I feel like I've actually made it here. Uh, Matt Halseth, this guy's a legend if you don't know who this is. Uh, Matt, thanks for stopping in on the live chat. This is super cool. Uh, so Matt is a, um, he's a guide also. He guides on a lot of the same uh, rivers as uh, Logan does. Uh, so uh, uh, Matt, thank you so much for stopping in. Um, uh, so if you own the bead fishing Bible, you will see pictures of Matt in there with our other good friend, uh, Mr. Randy Bonner. Uh, so, um, uh, Matt, that's, that's super cool. Thank you so much for stopping in. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, we're, we're having a rod discussion here. You know, we're, we're talking about all of our stuff, uh, and feel free to pipe in at any time here, Matt. Uh, definitely, uh, y your expertise is, uh, more than welcome, uh, here in, in this, uh, tiny little, uh, live chat. So, um, we're talking about Shimano rods and stuff like that and, uh, you know, doing all that. So super cool. Um, so as far as, uh, Willie here, uh, he's talking about the scimitar, uh, and, and there again, 
Willie, you're running a lot of spin caster reels. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll have to get to Matt's next comment here. Uh, you know, I bought a little scimitar for that Abu Max 170 you sent me, and it works out fantastic. You know, it, it's really good. So, um, you know, really, really uh, uh, fantastic rod. Uh, it works out super well. So, um, yeah, uh, this one here, Kyle, you're talking about, uh, you're curious about the Shimano uh, Compras. I wish Mike would get on this chat because Mike is like, it, Mike from Fisherman's, he's like uh, the ultimate in like knowing about Shimano. And it, Mike, if you're watching, um, please, uh, you know, shoot me a text over here if you can answer uh, about the the comp race, and then I'll make sure that I uh, funnel this through uh, over on this side. So, um, Matt, uh, don't sell yourself short. You float down the river cheering on Logan as he's catching all the fish. Oh, Matt, you know, uh, I've, 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 I've seen you on the river and I've seen you hook, hooked up with fish. Uh, uh, this is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it's super cool. Um, I, I just think it's cool how all you guys are, are interconnected and tied in together and all that. Um, but yeah, super cool. So I'll see if Mike shoots me a text over here and, uh, if, if he's on here, uh, yeah, I see 13 people watching. We have usually, the same, you know, group of people that are always commenting. So, um, let's see. Willie, you bought a favorite defender, uh, you grabbed on sale. Now I've never heard of that before. So, you know, you may have to, um, shoot me a, a picture of that at some point and do all that stuff. Otter cat. Welcome in. Thanks for stopping in talking about flipping sticks. Good old Tennessee otter cat. Welcome. Yeah, we're talking about all kinds of flipping sticks. So, Northwest Open season, thanks for stopping in. Take care. So, yeah, um, you know, kind of kind of cool stuff. Uh, you know, uh, so many different varieties of rods out there. And, and it all really comes down to the, the personal preference, you know. Uh, I, I found that, you know, going to the people that know, uh, that, that use rods on a daily basis, like Matt, like Logan, uh, and, and, you know, Dave Vang, all, you know, a lot of these other guys that, uh, you know, I've, uh, guides that I've got to know throughout the years, uh, and, and, you know, people that, you know, really are in the profession of fishing, you know, talking to them, finding out and, and really taking, um, oh, <laughs> so Matt's, so you guys are, yeah. Oh, you're each other's cheerleaders. <laughs> so, so Matt's right next to you. So. You convinced Matt to actually come onto this live chat. So, <laughs> well, I appreciate it. So we got, we got two of the, the best guides on the central, you know, well, in Oregon, in my opinion, uh, here on my, on my little tiny live stream on YouTube. So, uh, th this is, this is absolutely, uh, excellent. So, uh, all right, fish keeper. Thanks for stopping in. Have fun baking. I hope you guys make some good treats. Cool. Um, this is, this is, uh, uh, super cool. So, um, but anyways, uh, yeah, uh, I got two guides sitting here. Uh, these guys, they catch a lot of fish and, and, you know, you look at the equipment and the gear that they're using and, and, uh, yeah, I am getting giddy because this is super cool. <laughs> um, you know, uh, that, the, the thing is, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, look at what the, those guys are using on a daily basis, you know, and, and that'll tell you a lot about the quality of the, of the rods and equipment and stuff like that. If Earl was on here, uh, reef robber, you know, going out like on the Umatilla two, we, we went out on a charter trip. It was a bunch of us YouTubers that got together and Steve, he was there and, uh, Earl and Sarah uh, and Chad were there and, uh, Jessica, uh, um, uh, PNW lip rippers, whole bunch of us. Uh, we were all there Morgan's world. Uh, and, uh, they were using, uh, the Shakespeare ugly stick GX two, but they had coupled it up with a pen fierce three spinning reel because spinning reels, everybody can use. And I was, I, I picked up the rod and I'm like, this thing's like a Walmart rod, you know, but I can understand why a charter boat would do that because you have all of these people that come on that thing. They run a four hour trip, come back in, you got a new set of people. And, and so, you know, do you want to spend a lot of money on a, a rod? You know, especially when you have like 
kids smacking it on the rail of a boat. A charter boat's got big rails on it, you know. And and you can have kids that are four or five years old. They're smacking it on the rail of the boat. You know, it's getting beat up. It's getting flung around. You know, you put a diamond jig on it. You're ripping it around. You know, it gets snagged up. And you got somebody, oh, I got a big fish, you know. And they're hooked up on a big rock on the bottom, you know, with a diamond jig. And, you know, uh, would you want to have a super expensive rod? No. But you know what? When when you're out there and you're fishing and you're fighting those fish in on that little rod, it, it worked just fine. You know, it, it, a lot of it came down to the reel mechanics, you know. Uh, the reels were really what were doing most of the work. Those rods, you know, I mean, the fish are going to come up as long as they got the hook buried through their lip or they gag or whatever. You know, they're going to come up. It, it's not like, you know, they're they're going to just take off and be like, you know, oh, I'm going to snap your rod, you know, but just the amount of abuse that equipment gets. But then, you know, there, for an example, you go on Logan's boat and he's got Guide Select Classics, you know, which are, they're not cheap rods. They're not expensive rods, but, you know, uh, they're they're putting lots of fish in the boat you know, with, with, a, uh, uh, it, you could call it a Samar, a Kaimar, you know, one of those reels. And, and that's a full Akuma, you know, setup. Hey, burrito catfishing lady. Thanks for stopping in. Love the name too. <laughs> I just love it. It's, it's a great name. I'm over here rattling on. I gotta, I gotta keep myself, uh, from, uh, running out of, of uh, you know, air here. So yeah, Lisa, thanks for stopping in. Super cool. Um, you know, do you want to really, you know, rig up your entire boat with G. Loomis rods or Lama glass rods or, you know, when you have clients getting excited and you got, you know, people stomping around, you know, somebody hooks a fish, all, you know, it, you know, chaos ensues, especially in a drift boat, you know, of all things, you know, you're targeting salmon or steelhead in a drift boat, you got floats, you know, a steelhead, it, they just kind of, come out of nowhere. That's been my experience. You know, it's not like, oh, hey, you know, in three seconds, there's going to be a steelhead that hits, you know, all of a sudden bobber goes down, you know, reel down, set the hook, you know, and, uh, you know, you got, you got chaos, you know, you're telling people reel up, reel up, you know, this thing's going to go ballistic. And before you know it, within a, you know, flat blink of an eye, you got a fish racing all over the place. And, you know, then you got the guy and he's like, okay, keep, you know, trying to manage a boat, manage a net, coach the person, you know, and, and so the, the equipment has to be fail safe. And so that's what I look at a lot. You know, when I'm, when I'm looking at what like the, the, these pro guys are using is what's fail safe. You know, it's not necessarily the most, um, you know, expensive. So, uh, here, Logan, uh, professional testimony broke a rod today, got tips wrapped and snagged up and snapped. Um, but it happens. And that's the whole thing, Logan, like the rods you're using have a lifetime warranty on them. So, it, that's you're fishing with it you're using it and that's you know that's why you want to go with those rods that have you know those warranties but don't cost you four five six seven hundred dollars you know uh and, and there's a lot of expensive rods out there you know i would i would hate to see how much some of these fly guides that that guide you know a lot of these rivers spend on those rods because you're looking at like you know a boat with you know five or six sage rods in it or or you know, you could, you could even look at like some of the custom rods that they're making, especially like the predator, uh, you know, like the ESOX type, uh, predator fishing rods, like musky and pike, you know, these are eight, nine weight rods. And, and, uh, you know, I could see those getting broke even easier than, than, you know, a six to 12 pound line rated steelhead rod, you know, um, you know, uh, here, Kyle, he's talking about Mackenzie river rods. Um, yeah. Man, they make some really good stuff. They 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 are an excellent company for custom rods. And you're going with the Striker 9 foot 9 blank and Striker's a great local company too. There again, you're going to pay for it, but Josh takes care of people. He's really good, you know, and and I can't say enough good stuff about him. Super cool guy too, you know, and you know, him working with uh, Scott Weaver Dylan Rush Outfitters, their collaboration like with bead rods and doing all those setups and everything else that that's that it's just a super cool thing that they got going on so and uh you're going with the purple uh and green theme so very cool yeah brandon it happens fast like uh you know there again when when it goes boom it goes boom you know i i snagged up uh i bought a x11 from logan actually he was he was upgrading all his stuff and i was out trolling for uh springers and you know, I should have known better because I knew there was some kind of fouling, uh, but I kept trolling anyways. I was marking fish and I was like, oh, I'm going to run it. And I, I hung up with the flasher and the herring and everything else. 
And before I could even get to that rod, the 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 tip just went kaboom. It, it went off like a grenade. And so luckily I called Lamaglass. I got a new tip for it. So that rod's still in action. But um, you know, I Lamaglass I've not had the best of luck with, to be a hundred percent honest. Uh I've had three tip breaks on I, I have a red line that I use for primarily a, a spoon and spinner rod, eight to seventeen pound. Uh, you know, and a lot of people want something more sensitive, but uh, when I, when I'm throwing like a flying C for coho or something like that, just doing the, you know, couple hours before work or whatever, you know, usually I have that one rigged up and do all that stuff. So let's see if we get Scott on here to, to, to counter that. <laughs> yeah, they don't work at all. Uh, but, but Scott makes great stuff. And of course, Kyle elevated and God sent, you know, I mean, all good, all good stuff. I could sit here and just go on and on and on about all of our awesome, uh, you know, local tackle manufacturers, everything else, you know, yeah, you know, bead boxes back here and all that. So, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, you'd like to do that once Willie, after you pay the house off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for some people, custom rods are just not in the budget, you know, that's the whole thing. So, uh, here at Brandon, you, uh, you've done it several times while float fishing. Yeah. Drop the tip, set the hook, and boom. Yeah, there went the tip after the line wrap. Yeah, when you're mending line and stuff like that, it happens so fast. It's just like, you know, and and, and braided lines like, uh, you know, like a saw blade, you know. that That's why a lot of those guys that, that fish mono, they don't like the guys that show up with braid because if they cross up, the braid just cuts through the mono like nothing. So, let's see. We got the story here. I got the name Burrito during having toe surgery. I've had over 50 toe nicknames from YouTubers. <laughs> well, man. So, sounds like Logan's got some prototype beads to show me tomorrow. I'm excited. I can't wait. Man, I'm I, I'm not going to be able to sleep. I'm just going to be, eh, you know. <laughs> I, I think we're going to have a good time. It's going to be great times. So, and then, uh, Kyle, you're talking about uh, your friends with Nick from McKenzie. Uh, yeah. You know, knowing people, um, that, that definitely helps. And no shame in making that that payment on that, you know, especially get yourself a nice rod. So definitely uh, worthwhile on that end. So, but anyways, guys, uh, as Logan said, I better get my rest. And uh, so I think I'm going to do my due diligence and do that. I'm going to go uh, get ready to go for tomorrow. Make sure my daughter's ready to go. She's going to be with us. And uh, in the next video, uh, or one of the next videos, you're going to see Ranger Rick. And uh, let me tell you about Ranger Rick. He's uh, quite the character. Uh, <laughs> his real name is not Ranger Rick. It, it, it was given to him by me. And uh, uh, you'll, you'll find out real quick uh, that he is Ranger Rick. He's uh, truly a trash panda. So uh, anyways, uh, yeah, it should be a good time. We're going to load... Logan's boat up and, uh, you know, go after him, get, see what we can do. So we've always done good with Logan, you know, but fish are fish. So, you know, nonetheless, it's going to be, uh, uh, good times. There's Bodie, you know, Ranger Rick, it will always live forever. There's never going to be another trash panda. So anyways, guys, I'm going to head out and, uh, go get my rest and, uh, you know, Everybody be safe out there on the river. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope everybody gets all the fish that they dream about and uh, then some, or at least get out. Enjoy the beautiful weather we have right now. Uh, Willie, I wish I could send it to you, but I can't. But, you know, get out there. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Do do something outside. We've been inside way too long. So, till next week, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and let your friends know that we got a Friday night chat here. So, I'll talk to you guys all next week.